David Kay from Saro Consulting. I'd like to tell you about a survey and report sponsored by the library company Innovative Interfaces that was undertaken in 2014-2015 with uh, seven UK uh, higher education institutions uh, with considerable support from their library teams. The uh, report is available for download and some of the supporting data is available uh, also from uh, the innovative website as noted on this slide. The universities involved were uh, the University of Glasgow, Hull, Keele University, London, South Bank University, Queen Margaret's, Queen's Belfast and also the Wellcome Library and this work built on an initial survey that prototyped the idea undertaken by the University of Manchester in, uh, in the spring of 2014. The important thing about the report is the volume of response. Uh, we had over 4,000 responses ranging across the uh, community from undergraduates through to tenured uh, faculty uh, across the uh, universities and of those 4,000 responses, um, 3,000 plus were uh, fully complete and therefore were part of the statistical analysis, but many of those that didn't complete the whole survey uh, also provided uh, um, considerable uh, free text input with their opinions on issues relating to discovery and online library services. So this means we have a considerable body of uh, both uh, uh, statistical evidence from 3,000 complete responses and also uh, many hundreds, in fact thousands, of free text responses from an even wider range of users. Um, the context was set actually by the initial round of the Spotlight project and this is credited in the report. Um, the inspiration being to understand exactly how users wish to interact with the full breadth of the online library ranging from not just uh, subscribed resources, um, e-books, e-journals, but also all manner of digitised content um, and how they might interact with that in a fully online environment um, rather than uh, on the university network um, but they, uh, beyond the, the university boundaries and therefore considering service issues as well as, uh, as, 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 as purely discovery issues. But I'm going to concentrate on the discovery issues um, in the, the summary of the uh, report now. We had headline findings in terms of immediate recommendations and also in terms of uh, longer term uh, opportunities. Uh, the immediate recommendations, getting the basics right, uh, included the following. Uh, first of all, that user behaviours are increasingly pervasive, that differences in age, experience, whether it's undergraduates or, 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 or tenured faculty, and across subject areas ranging from um, STEM through uh, humanities uh, and the arts, um, the, the differences seemed increasingly uh, not to matter in terms of if the natural and embedded and intuitive online behaviour uh, that people were uh, uh, talking about and um, the, the, their expectations therefore of, uh, of services such as discovering resources. Um, we believe this is a significant change over the last perhaps five years, uh, obviously uh, relating to uh, the spread of mobile technologies, uh, the embedding of the web in everyday life, um, but uh, it, it, it means perhaps we can take a different response to issues of discovery uh, than times when we perhaps considered that uh, experienced faculty might go about things in a completely different way than inexperienced uh, undergraduates. Uh, secondly, uh, that there is an expectation that uh, discovery would take place online anywhere um, on any device and the recommendation uh, coming from the community and from us as observers that any library or uh, archival or museum service should see this as the default access mode to their content. Furthermore, it's clear that uh, as users become more experienced with online discovery, uh, 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 they also become uh, more discriminating. And in particular, uh, that there is a recognition that different search tools uh, work better to serve different purposes. Um, and uh, there is a place not just for uh, Google, uh, Google Scholar, but also for the discovery layer and also for a, a, a range of other uh, 
discovery approaches, but that people will select those in, in terms of the particular task that they're doing, that they're not look, looking necessarily for a, a, a single solution, notwithstanding the fact that Google and Google Scholar rate very, very highly uh, and other search engines rate very, very highly in people's default response to, to initiating uh, activity, as do uh, web scale tools like Wikipedia. Underpinning all this is the recognition that uh, um, users are now well informed about how they would expect to go about discovering things. That doesn't mean they understand uh, complex search strategies, but it means that they, they have clear opinions as to, to, to their own uh, discovery strategies from their experience in wider context. Um, and this undoubtedly involves global search engines. It involves some expectations of uh, unified search across resources. And uh, certainly users seem to have their own tests in terms of their confidence in searching. Um, for instance, the ability to find known items without uh, providing an exactly spelt title is uh, is high on people's expectations uh, because of the, the the way that Google supports them and and other web scale tools. And whilst not particularly directly relevant to uh, to, to the Spotlight project, it's important to recognise that uh, uh, the focus of undergraduates, in particular, and taught master students, is on the availability of course readings. Um, this was highly emphasised in the survey and whilst this is particularly important for, 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 for librarians considering overall issues of collection management in the in spotlight on the digital, um, th there's an interesting challenge as to how we embed uh, our key digitised resources into course readings um, and into uh, reading list systems and those channels whereby students expect to, to, to be directed towards the things that are really important. But uh, the, the evolution of reading lists in the UK library ecosystem and in the student experience is particularly important in this respect. We also had a bunch of recommendations that uh, uh, apply to the uh, uh, slightly more distant, but, but certainly near near future, rather than things that uh, uh, have to be dealt with immediately in terms of uh, service levels. And we subtitle this playing well in the online ecosystem. And this goes to the heart of uh, what Spotlight on the Digital is about. And uh, uh, top of the list, recommendation number six, the local collection needs to be surfaced in the wider ecosystem. And that means particularly surfacing it not just in the global search engines but in places uh, web scale places where other valuable resources might be found such as wikipedia and uh, and flickr um, furthermore that libraries can, should consider how to encompass non-text resources this is an encouragement i think to to people involved in in, in digitization in the sense that uh, there was concern amongst uh, particularly among students but also amongst faculty that valuable resources were excluded from not just the library catalogue, uh, which is quite a challenge, but also from the, the discovery layers and the discovery mechanisms that the library was putting in place. Um, and uh, I feel that's a particular encouragement to us pressing for uh, digitised resources to find their place in, in, that, in that ecosystem. Um, there was also emphasis that electronic resources demand electronic workflows, uh, that, uh, that, that the discovery of those resources and then the things that you can do around them should be well integrated. Uh, the idea that you might have an electronic resource and then only be able to undertake annotation, only be able to uh, um, collect notes, only be able to share it through physical means uh, doesn't seem to fit the direction of travel and therefore considering what other workflows uh, scholars and uh, students in general would want to undertake around a resource in the same way they would undertake them around a physical book and imagining how you could deliver those electronically is really very important and uh, reference management systems are the tip of that iceberg but uh, tighter integration of, of, of work with the resources and sharing of things around uh, the resources in an electronic environment seems to be the uh, thing that's in people's minds. And in, 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 in particular, it would appear that users are inspired by their experience of other modern digital services. 
and how those services ranging from Amazon to the supermarkets uh, and other examples that you would have in mind uh, that are in people's everyday lives have increased people's expectations as to the holistic nature of those services and how they might indeed be surfaced through apps as well as through uh, uh, large-scale uh, web environments. And lastly, but far from the least, there is a recognition that social is becoming the norm. Um, in the survey, there was clearly an, a greater emphasis from younger users on what you might do um, in a social environment around uh, uh, course resources, uh, uh, around scholarly resources. And this wasn't just for undergraduates, but, but, but was reflected in the, the postgraduate community. Um, but it wasn't exclusively uh, reflected by young people. And, uh, we feel in examining the answers and in examining the um, explanations that people gave, which were considerable in some cases, this is not just um, a younger generation naively approaching scholarship and, and study uh, and looking to use the, the only tools they know in, in a mindless manner and that uh, therefore we could assume they will grow out of this as they become better scholars and more attuned to the uh, academic environment, to the library environment, uh, but, but rather that uh, there is a certain uh, in intelligence and intuition where people are, are bringing these things from their everyday lives and can see how they might be meaningfully applied in the educational environment, in the scholarly environment. So we shouldn't be dismissive of, of, of the uh, undoubted fact that the, the, the pressure for uh, building social t uh, experiences around scholarly resources is coming from uh, younger people. And we should note that it's not being out, outrightly dismissed uh, by senior academics. I'm going to talk very briefly about the data analysis uh, which uh, underpins those uh, 10 headline observations. Um, but the most important thing in, in, in considering this survey is to recognise how it emphasises the principles uh, that are absolutely central to, to Spotlight on the digital. Um, you can obviously study this uh, further detail in the report itself, uh, which, which is free to download. Um, and uh, therefore, I will uh, just highlight key key elements. Um, first of all, to, 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 to emphasize that the spread of respondents in terms of subject grouping um, and also in terms of uh, uh, their uh, age groups or levels of experience is if not perfectly representative of the university community, an extremely good representation, bearing in mind uh, that we have 4,000 uh, respondents and 3,000 uh, co fully completed uh, surveys, that the spread is from undergraduate year one right through to uh, tenured academics uh, and good representation of masters, PhDs and, and, and postdocs uh, with some input from, from uh, library stuff and others, but not in any dominant way, and the spread across uh, from arts and humanities uh, through the STEM subjects in categories that we agreed with the uh, seven universities uh, is uh, uh, pleasing and, uh, and sufficiently representative. And therefore, as we look at the survey in detail, and if you study the report, uh, there is breakdown across those categories that allows you to compare and to satisfy yourselves that, uh, that, that, that where there are differences and where there is, where there is consistency. An overall uh, message that came out of the, the survey was, was about people wanting to use the uh, online library, digitized resources, subscribed resources, um, anytime, anywhere, on any device. And this is best summarized by uh, this diagram, which emphasizes that 39% of the respondents um, indicated they wish to use resources and do use resources, not only in the library, not only elsewhere on campus, but also elsewhere in the UK and the world. Um, and you can see from the other segments that uh, those who only use things in the library or only use things in the library and on campus are, are, are very small, more, small proportions. Um, clearly, we don't have a, a very large number of purely distance learners in this. Only 2.5% only uh, access things from uh, elsewhere in the UK or the world. But uh, the 39% is extremely significant and predicted to be a rising number uh, from the text responses that we had. Uh, there's a recognition 
that of the uh, of, of the tools that are available within the uh, within the university uh, and, and, and made available through the library and through learning services that, that, that there are some strong preferences that, that library search is certainly not 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 not, not dismissed in favor of of, of Google uh, though we go back to the horses and courses argument but what is clear is some of the more esoteric or some of the more specialized or um, um, discovery mechanisms are not well known and are not widely used. So for instance, union catalogues um, such as Copac or Salsa or, or Suncat, we noted that 50% or just over 50% of the respondents were not even familiar with what they were. And uh, of those that were familiar, the uh, in terms of this heat map, you can see straight away that, that, that the recognition of the, uh, that the value of those things in discovery is much lower uh, than, uh, than the, the uh, uh, general library search. Um, and that obviously uh, there's high recognition of the value of Wikipedia and high recognition of the value of other popular other popular websites. Uh, Google gets played down in this survey in a way that we, to start with, couldn't explain until we realised we should probably have also asked about Google Scholar. Uh, we've since conducted another piece of research that indicates that uh, this scoring for Google would have been higher if we put Google and Google Scholar. Um, so uh, we, we have a slight anomaly perhaps in terms of this heat map in this particular area and uh, we wouldn't want anybody to go away thinking that uh, therefore this whole argument that global search engines are important is, is not true and that we should concentrate for instance on Wikipedia instead. Um, it's a both and and this is, uh, is not necessarily we believe a representative score. Um, Interestingly, we, in terms of the horses for courses argument, we noted that uh, um, users uh, have different purposes, as illustrated uh, with, in, in the columns here, ranging from finding known items to more serendipitous activity, um, and um, depending on therefore the stage of their research and the, the, the level of their knowledge, and this could equally apply to very experienced researchers entering into a new cross-disciplinary area, they will use different tools and that they will not necessarily have known items up their sleeve and they will not necessarily carry out an initial search just looking um, at uh, a, a library resources. And we note that uh, um, the uh, uh, in the wider context, uh, Google, Wikipedia play very strongly into some of these uh, these activities. Um, we've since conducted a, a survey that uh, indicates that uh, that indicates that librarians perhaps have a stronger view of the uses of. Uh, for instance, such as uh, uh, aggregated uh, uh, databases, uh, union catalogues, um, and that uh, they. Uh, <coughs> um, have perhaps a much higher view of the use of uh, discovery uh, layers. Subsequently, we've conducted a further survey of librarians in the summer of uh, 2015 to see whether their view of their user discovery behaviours matches with, uh, with, with, with that of those uh, respondents to the survey we're discussing and they share many of the common views. Perhaps the only real exception is that they have perhaps greater confidence in the use of the uh, discovery layer um, than uh, was exhibited in the, uh, the, the user survey responses. Uh, they have a similar view with the exception of the particular use of, uh, of COPAC for uh, locating and accessing known items, similar view of the use of, of aggregated uh, uh, union catalogues, library specialist aggregated catalogues, even to the extent of uh, a low uh, usage of, uh, of, of WorldCat. Um, and um, in this survey, we did ask specifically about Google Scholar. And uh, going back to the comment I made about the shortcoming in the previous survey, you'll notice their view of the high level of use of Google Scholar. Um, couple of final areas to look at in terms of looking beyond discovery to uh, 
what people want to do with the resources they access and I think this is important for Spotlight in informing not only how we construct our discovery services but uh, how they integrate with wider things and what those services allow people to do in terms of added value. So you'll notice the uh, in the heat map uh, an emphasis uh, um, uh, strongly on download uh, but also um, interest in bookmarking, interest in reference and citation and interest in uh, copying and reusing the content uh, and whilst awareness of licensing issues is not as strong as you might uh, hope um, these four things, the, the items identified in green on the heat map do give us some kind of steer as to uh, if we're going to provide an effective discovery environment what that, that enables people to do uh, less approval in these questions um, and remember this is phrased as need to do rather than want to do less emphasis on on, on, uh, on more extended features and those that involve social interaction rating reviewing uh, discussing uh, and recommendations and the use of social uh, social media uh, but as we can see in the uh, Subsequent questions we, we, we asked, um, where we asked people about their, their ambitions, there's a strong uh, interest, especially amongst the, 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 the younger demographic, uh, but going right through to uh, postdocs uh, in introducing uh, value-added features, such as rating, reviewing, annotation, but also social features. Um, the other thing we asked users about was what would make content easier to use and again, there's a number of uh, indicators here as to what, how we should be exposing digitized content. Um, the one-stop search, more unified search, exposing it in the places people go rather than assuming people will go to lots of places for the same, uh, same purpose, uh, that, that, that they actually want to go to one place for a particular purpose, such as a known title search or such as serendipitous discovery. Um, but also uh, interest in saving searches um, and saving search results um, and um, uh, linking uh, uh, things to uh, other services such as core readings and particularly an emphasis on the persistence of, of, of URLs um, and the quality of, 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 uh, of, of viewers that all these things really make a difference uh, to discoverability or to the value of that discovery once you've made it and your ability to persistently access it and work with with that content uh, and again we note that uh, uh, these things ripple across the demographic uh, albeit varying interests in varying things there are no dramatic uh, differences on, on, on the scales of uh, on the scales of, of interest very lastly we took the liberty of asking people a number of open-ended questions, uh, three or four open-ended questions about uh, their uh, hopes for their library, the, the, the services they would like to see enhanced, the content that they would like to see uh, brought forward, um, and in particular a question on, uh, uh, on them expressing what their ideal online library might be like in the year 2020, and we invited people Twitter style to give us a 140 character um, a summary of that. Uh, Obviously, uh, uh, predictably, many respondents chose to write more, uh, but it says something about the enthusiasm of the, uh, the people involved that are many hundreds of survey respondents took trouble to, to, to respond to these questions. Um, we had 1,300 submissions on My Ideal Library uh, across the uh, academic libraries that we, we consulted. And if you look in the report, you'll see that we've taken the trouble to highlight keywords that indicate some of the more advanced features that people see as part of a holistic on library environment and not only to be able to discover stuff to be able to personalize make resource suggestions or receive resource suggestions uh, for the system to know what would be of interest to them and link them not only to other content but uh, relevant researchers and, and authors and uh, in overall to enable people to act as contributors whether that's in rating reviews recommendations or in, in social uh, social dialogue um, and perhaps the thing that highlights the spirit of this more than any of the other statements and is mercifully brief is in 2020 my ideal online library would be a teacher a guide an active force rather than a tool 
and what it means when people say a teacher, a guide, and an active resource, uh, an active force, is very much emphasized in, in, in the highlighted sections of the top responses. And by top responses, we had librarians say, which of these uh, are, are the most compelling arguments of the 1300 we received? And in the full report, there are around 30 that are, that are highlighted in this way. So in conclusion, I hope that this uh, run through what is a unique and, uh, and probably quite important piece of work undertaken by the seven libraries involved. Um, uh, I hope you are able to, to see how this might shape our response to the uh, discoverability of, of digitized content, whether that be born digital content or whether that be uh, uh, newly digitized uh, content um, and that uh, um, perhaps it would be excellent to see the community of people who are curating that sort of content driving forward this agenda because if one thing's for sure in this survey people are interested in accessing content uh, much more widely than just subscribe resources and, and textbooks but the more we can place the digitized content we have in the context of those core resources through a more holistic approach to, uh, to discovery and, and rendering the content uh, and the places that it's surfaced uh, is potentially a huge advantage in, uh, in the, the ongoing uptake of the sort of resources we're all responsible for. Thank you very much for your time.